All right, well thank you for joining me for another driveway episode. Today we're going to kind of finish off our bumper here. I've taken quite a bit of time in the off camera here to make sure we get the, everything welded on the front and the back and kind of get a rough sand going on. So we're gonna to try to pretty much finish this off and call it done here today. So stick around and see how we do this. Okay, so for the most part, the bumper is complete. It's got the metal reinforcing brackets and it's all welded in. The little pockets over here look a little, uh, kinda little off, but I'm not gonna worry about them because I still have to build the brake duct into it. So most likely that'll be experimentation with carbon fiber and it'll just cover over the weird inconsistencies over there. Probably end up just like riveting it on or something along those lines. But essentially what we need to do is if you look closely, I don't know if you can see it at this distance, let's get a little in closer. You can see there's some low spots from the weld. I hit this all with a really rough paper on the belt sander. So all these dark spots are the low spots. Like on this side, it did really well. Down here is a little more funky because you can't get the belt sander in that hole, but anyways, that is pretty much what we're going to be addressing today. It's like the slop of choice I'm going to be using today is this plastic bonder, JB Weld. This is the tan color. They also make it in black. It's a more black gray color, like a standard JB Weld color. And it would blend in more with this bumper co color. All right, hopefully that's good enough. Acetone flies off pretty quick. I'm sure we got, don't have any paper towel fuzz. This stuff is starting to thicken up already. All right, so if anyone's keeping track, um, let's just forget the last hour or so. It's like that uh, glue stuff, not very good. It barely even stuck to the bumper at all and I could just peel it off. So I ground it all back off and got to go back to the drawing board and see what I actually can use on this thing. So back to the interwebs and see what I can find. Okay, so if we want to do this 100% correct, we need to figure out what type of plastic we're dealing with. We already know that it's a thermal plastic based on how it melts, but kind of need to figure out what type. It's like each type of plastic has its own type of uh, type of fix. I want to try to see if there's any lettering here. All right, I 
think we might have something down there. just have to look up product design for taking care of that so yeah excellent all right so it's been quite a while since I was working on this bumper because I had to wait for some stuff to show up this here is a dual mix problem plastic repair material. It's quite a bit more expensive than that uh, urethane glue stuff that I attempted to use, but you also get a whole bunch more, and it's designed to work with this polyolefin or whatever they call it. This is a polypropylene, but it says repairs EPDM, TPO, PP, and other olefin based plastics. So. Over here, I tested out a little bit to see how it behaved, and it's actually a pretty thick epoxy. So, that should work out pretty nice, better than something that's super thin. But you have a very short working time, only about five minutes. So, hopefully with this uh, mix tip here, It'll go pretty quick. So here's the hoping and time to get gluing. That's all slathered in there. 
that was kind of interesting. So now that we're all reinforced, we should just be able to flip it over and start working on the cosmetic section. So just in case anyone was wondering, I use these neat little scuff pads. You see them a lot everywhere, those quick release little guys. So I went with a coarse one on just a drill. It does work on the die grinder, but the die grinder moves a little bit quick and tries to melt the surface. So if you have like a lot of material to remove, you could probably hit it with a die grinder and then come back through with this to finish the scuffing up. With this particular ma material here, you'll know that um, if you're seeing something kind of shiny black, that will be a melted point. Whereas this dull gray up here, that's scuffed up. So that's where you'll see these darker areas from where the uh, material was melted.
All right, so the next part is actually more of a Bondo related product. This is called Bumper Bite. It's essentially a polyester filler that is very flexible. So this is what's going to let us feather in these edges because epoxy is kind of a gummy type of stuff and it doesn't necessarily like feathering. Now this should pretty much just be like a Bondo filler. So should be the same rules apply. You want only so much hardener. If you want it to kick over faster, put more in. But once we get this all uniformly mixed up here, Like a lot of this bumper stuff, for some reason, this has a very low kick over time. So, once again, we gotta move fast. This stuff is cured up pretty good. It's time to uh, take off the big stuff.
Alright, I'm going to hit it with a guide coat of some surface primer. This will kind of just give me a idea of how bad of a sanding job I did. Well, I'm no body man, but that's not looking too bad. There's still quite a bit of work left to be done, but I'm going to leave that for whenever I get around to painting the whole car. I mean, this is a lot of dusty and tedious work that I'd just like to move on to something else. All right, so that's definitely gonna have to do it. This bumper's looking pretty decent. It's not 100% ready for like close inspection, but once we get around to paint phase, then uh, we'll take care of the rest of that. It's got a lot of scuff marks and everything from curb rash and so on and so forth. But anyways, thanks for joining me on this disaster, but it turned out halfway decent in the end. Thanks for watching. Make sure to come back next time. Until then, I guess I will see you later.